let's take a look at cell transport. Now, yesterday we discussed the plasma membrane, the structure and the function of the plasma membrane. So let's take a step back real quick and talk about the limits of the plasma membrane and the size of the cell. So there are limits on how big a cell can be. Small cells are more efficient because they have higher surface area. So the nutrients and the waste enter and exit the cell through the cell membrane. Remember, it's selectively permeable. And substances reach the center of the cell faster in small cells. So what happens is as the cell increases, as it grows, it really reaches a maximum size that it wants to be because of the fact that substances that um, are smaller tend to reach the center of the cell faster. So we want that fast, fast efficiency, really fast for these things to move around the cell. If it was really big, if the cell was huge, the substances would take a long time to reach the cells or and reach the things inside the cells, those organelles. So in essence, those chemical reactions might not take place as fast as they need to be. So remember, there's a limit on how big a cell can be for efficiency, basically, to make sure that the substances reach cells and reach the organelles faster in those small cells. So keep that in mind as we move through this lesson on cell transport. <clears throat> so we have several types of transport inside a cell. We have passive transport and we have active transport. Now we're going to specifically talk about passive transport today. Now passive transport is just as the name says, it's passive. This is the movement of a substance across a cell membrane without energy. So passive transport does not require energy for things to move from outside to inside the cell or from inside to outside the cell. So keep this in mind, passive transport is done without energy. Now there's two types of passive transport that we're going to discuss. The first is called diffusion. Now diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high concentration to low concentration. You might hear me talk about how things move down a concentration gradient. So think of it in terms of you on a subway or you in a packed room in a big party. There's a lot of people in this party right here or on a subway. All the people are tightly packed together. There's really no way you can move. So where do you want to go? Well, you want to go outside. You want to go to an area that doesn't have a lot of people because you're hot and you're tired and you just don't want to be shoved around anymore. So you are going to move across the cell membrane and you're going to move down a concentration gradient to an area of low concentration. So diffusion moves things, moves substances from an area of high concentration to low concentration. You're moving down a concentration gradient. Ready? So this is our first type of passive transport. Now talking about more about diffusion, we're talking about, remember, areas of high concentration are substances moving from high concentrations to low concentration. So notice these pictures here. We have a variety of different pictures. We have our pictures here of our orange substance and our purple substance. Now on the left we have orange, on the right we have purple. Now notice that the orange substance wants to move across to the right because there's no orange over there. Purple wants to move to the left because there's no purple over there. So these guys are going to move back and forth as you see in this next picture as well. Some are going to bounce off the cell membrane, some are going to be allowed to pass through until eventually we come to equilibrium, basically where we have equal amounts of purple and orange on each side. So if we, if we take a look at the purple, we notice we have three purples on each side. If we take a look at the orange, we'll have six on each side. So we have equal numbers of orange and equal numbers of purple on both sides. That is equilibrium. And technically, that is what the cell strives for, the same amount of substance on both sides. So taking a look at this picture, assuming the membrane is permeable to salt, which way will it move across the barrier? 
So think about this, which one has high concentration and which one has low concentration? Our salt concentrations on both sides, we always want to move from high to low. So which way is it going to flow? If you said B, you are correct. The sodium or the salt wants to move from high to low. So since there was more salt on the right, it wants to move to the left. So that would be B. It's moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now taking a look at this one, which of the arrows below shows the correct movement across the sugar permeable membrane? So we have 30% sugar solution outside. We have 10% sugar solution inside. Which way does the sugar want to move? Does it want to move inside the cell, which is A, or does it want to move outside the cell, which is B? If you said A, you would be correct. Again, moving from high concentration to low concentration. So while we have diffusion or simple diffusion as our first type of passive transport, remember simple diffusion is just where molecules diffuse directly through the membrane. These typically are your smaller, your nonpolar substances. We have facilitated diffusion, which is our second type of passive transport. And this is where transport proteins actually will create channels within the plasma membrane. Now, we were talking about this yesterday. Now, these channels allow certain things, such as larger or maybe even polar molecules, to move through the plasma membrane. Now, remember, our plasma membrane is, uh, it doesn't like water. So water is a polar molecule, so p water would be able to move through here. That's another type we're going to talk about tomorrow, osmosis. But other things, other larger things, other polar molecules will be able to move with facilitated diffusion. Facilitated means that it needs some sort of help, and that protein, that transport protein, gives it that help it needs to move across the plasma membrane. Now please remember that diffusion is really important to living organisms. Organisms obtain daily requirements and release waste products by diffusion. So those needed substances that need to um, go inside a cell or those waste products that need to come out happen because of diffusion. So plants diffuse carbon dioxide through stomata in leaves for, car uh, for photosynthesis. Plants also diffuse oxygen out through stomata in the same manner. So these are needed things that go inside and outside. So plants diffuse carbon dioxide inside. It's going to diffuse oxygen out because that's a waste product. Now in animals and, and, and plants as well, gas exchange happens for respiration in animals and plants. Think about how animals breathe. We breathe oxygen in and we do release carbon dioxide. This is a gas exchange. It happens by diffusion. Oxygen enters your blood cells and then all that wasted carbon dioxide is actually diffused out of the cells into um, your lungs, which kind of go off in your breathing. Also, some products of digestion are absorbed by diffusion as well. So remember your two types of passive transport. These are transport across a plasma membrane that do not require energy. We have diffusion, which is just your simple diffusion, the movement of substances from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And we also have facilitated diffusion, where transport proteins are used to move 